information once again shows the superior nature of our Lord's creation. In verses of the Quran, it is revealed that God created man within a proportion. He who created you and formed you and proportioned you and assembled you in whatever way he will. A rectangle, the proportion of whose sides is equal to the golden ratio, is known as a golden rectangle. Let us now examine the features of this golden rectangle together. A rectangle whose sides are 1 and 1.618 units long is a golden rectangle. Let us assume a square drawn along the length of the short side of this rectangle and draw a quarter circle between two corners of the square. Then, let us draw a square and a quarter circle on the remaining side and do this for all the remaining rectangles in the main rectangle. When you do this, you will end up with a spiral. The British aesthetician William Charlton explains the way that people find the spiral pleasing and have been using it for thousands of years, stating that we find spirals pleasing because we can visually follow them with ease. The spirals based on the golden ratio contain the most incomparable structures you can find in nature. The first examples we can give of this are the spiral sequences on the sunflower and the pine cone. This is one of the many examples of how Almighty God has created all things flawlessly and with a proportion. When investigating the shells of mollusks, the form and the structure of the internal and external surfaces of the shells attracted the scientists' attention. The internal surface is smooth, the outside one is fluted. The mollusk body is inside shell and the internal surface of shells should be smooth. The outside edges of the shell augment a rigidity of cells and thus increase its strength. The shell forms astonish by their perfection and profitability of means spent on its creation. The spiral's idea in shells is expressed in the perfect geometrical form, in surprising, beautiful, sharpened design. The shells of most mollusks grow in a logarithmic spiral manner. There can be no doubt, of course, that these animals are unaware of even the simplest mathematical calculation let alone logarithmic spirals. So how is it that the creatures in question can know that this is the best way for them to grow? How do these animals that some scientists describe as primitive know that this is the ideal form for them? It is impossible for growth of this kind to take place in the absence of a consciousness or intellect. That consciousness exists neither in mollusks nor, despite what some scientists would claim, in nature itself. It is totally irrational to seek to account for such a thing in terms of chance. This structure can only be the product of a superior intellect and knowledge. Almighty God has created these living things to be flawless. In one verse of the Qur'an, it is revealed how God reigns over all things with His superior knowledge and how human beings must reflect on our Lord's matchless creative artistry. My Lord encompasses all things in His knowledge, so will you not pay heed? Growth of this kind was described as gnomic by the biologist Sir Darcy Thompson, an expert on the subject, 
who stated that it was impossible to imagine a simpler system during the growth of a seashell than which was based on widening and extension in line with identical and unchanging proportions. As he pointed out, the shell constantly grows, but its shape remains the same. One can see one of the best examples of this type of growth in a nautilus, which is just a few centimeters in diameter. Crosby Morrison describes this growth process, which is exceptionally difficult to plan, even with human intelligence, stating that along the nautilus shell, an internal spiral extends, consisting of a number of chambers with mother-of-pearl lined walls. As the animal grows, it builds another chamber at the spiral shell mouth, larger than the one before it, and moves forward into this larger area by closing the door behind it with a layer of mother-of-pearl. The scientific names of some other marine creatures with logarithmic spirals containing the different growth ratios in their shells are Haliotus parvus, Dolium perdix, Murex, Scalari pretiosa. The cochlea in the human inner ear serves to transmit sound vibrations. This bony structure filled with fluid has a logarithmic spiral shape with a fixed angle of 73 degrees 43 minutes containing the golden ratio. Examples of curves based on the logarithmic spiral can be seen in the tusks of elephants and the now extinct mammoth, lion's claws, and parrot's beaks. The Iperia spider always weaves its webs in a logarithmic spiral. Among the microorganisms known as plankton, the bodies of globigenerae, planorbis, vortex, terebra, turitelli, and trochida are all constructed on spirals. Ammonites, which are today extinct and found only in fossil form, also have shells that grow logarithmically. Neither is the spiral form in the animal kingdom limited to mollusk shells alone. The horns of such animals as the antelope, the mountain goat, and the ram also grow in spirals based on the golden proportion. The DNA molecule in which all the physical features of living things are stored has also been created in a form based on the golden ratio. DNA consists of two intertwined perpendicular helixes. The length of the curve in each of these helixes is 34 angstroms and the width 21 angstroms. One angstrom is one hundred millionth of a centimeter. 21 and 34 are two consecutive Fibonacci numbers. All this information is just some of the important proof that the universe